On this particular painting, I was attempting to do a little bit of rule breaking in terms of, I've got two pine cones instead of three, sort of divided a little bit down the center. So it's a little bit of a painting for me to have fun with and see if I could make it work. And I like what it's doing quite well. I have just recently added a glaze down here. This was much lighter and this was lighter and competed with the pine cones. So I added a glaze that softened it. Now it's not competing with the pine cones, but now it doesn't look very dramatic. So what I'm gonna show you in this little segment is adding a few darks in dramatically. And how you can tell if something needs fixing or not is if you cover it and the painting gets better, that's a very good clue that it needs to be fixed. And in this case, the pine cones are better without this. Before it was too light and detracted from the pine cones, now it's too neutral and blends in with the pine cones. So we're gonna take it down to dark so that the pine cones pop out. So I've mixed up some dark into my deep blue, a little bit of Prussian, touch of indigo. That's way more paint than I wanted and now my brush, so I'm gonna just clean my brush right off. And I'm gonna add a little bit of sepia to it to tone it down more than I wanted. But I think, and I'm gonna rinse my brush again because now we've spent all this time on this painting. So this final stage is gonna be very critical. So I wanna make sure that the paint is wet enough, the brush is not too loaded, because you only get one shot at putting in a strong dark like this. So I think my brush is about right now. I'm not gonna wet my paper this time because what I'm gonna to try to get is a little bit of this dry brush look. And, and when I lay this glaze down, I wet it, and the glaze got very blended and neutral, and I want this to be a little bit more dramatic. So I'm just gonna start right up here in between these pine cones with a pretty strong dark. I'm not being very careful about the edge of the pine cones because they're pretty big guys and they can take in and it doesn't matter too much. And I'm using a large brush to do this. It's a 38 Cheap Joe's Art Stuff Tsunami Brush. Now I'm gonna add a little water and soften that down. Now I'm gonna come in and add a little red, a little undertone. That was more red than I wanted. Ah, that's better. I'm gonna leave a little bit of the underpainting showing as we did up there. Now I'm gonna dip back in. I've gone darker, lighter, softer, harder edge. Now I'm gonna dip back into some strong color. For sort of a grand finale down here. A little stronger right up in there. I'm so up close to it, I have a little trouble determining what's pine cone and what's background. So if I go over the pine cone, then I've created a whole nother problem for myself. And I'm going at this a little bit tenderly I can come back in and add more color. And I'm gonna change my tone to a little more into the watered down sepia tone over here on the edge because I don't want the eye to go over here so much. So I'm neutralizing that a little bit. So coming back in, going now back into my blues because I'm coming back in where I want the strength. Big strong finish, a little bit of red. Not that much red. There we go. And I've left a little bit of the background poking through. Go back in here and reinforce my darks just a little bit. I want those to be pretty deep. But there's an example of just a one wash fix. And now I think when that dries, it will dry a little bit lighter than it is now. And I will reassess it once it dries. And I think that it's gonna make the pine cones, if we look at the before and after, I think you'll see the pine cones pop out and now the basket behind it recede, which is what I was intending to do. So I think this is good.